Delphis Philbert, Board, 1868, in Lorry Now, Prescott and Russell, Ontario. He had 13 siblings, perhaps including half-siblings. He married Pamela Cadio, Board, 1873, in Prescott, Ontario. Delphis was the first Vilmer in these branches to be born in Ontario. According to census, Delphis was a cultivator, a farmer who owned his own farm, and a fromager with employees. Sounds like he did a bit of everything, including making cheese. It's 1878. Delphus's brother, Joseph, passes away at age two. Delphus is 10. It's 1890. Its father passes away. Delphus is 22. Two years later, he marries Pablo and marries into the historic family Cadio, which includes ancestors from the Grand Recru, joining the list with other ancestors on other branches. The Grand Recru was a way to get more settlers to New France. By 1651, Ville Marie, before it was called Montreal, had been reduced to less than 50 inhabitants by repeated attacks from the Mohawk. The port's founder, Maisonneau, returned to France that year to recruit a hundred men to bolster the failing colony before abandoning it forever. These recruits arrived in 1653 and essentially guaranteed the evolution of Ville Marie and of all New France. The Cadu name, besides being listed on the Grand Recru Monument, is a family name that extends far back into history through several branches seemingly extending to connect with Charlemagne the Great. It should also be noted that every person of European descent most likely has some sort of noble blood and a fair amount can trace back to Charlemagne in some capacity. Here it's the main maternal branch of the Vio family tree which reaches off into other angles in order to connect. But there'll be more on that in another story. It's 1893. Delphus and Pamela have their first child, Fidelia. Delphus is 25. Two years later, Albert is born. It's 1896. Gold has been discovered at Bonanza Creek, a tributary of the Claudike River. During the Claudike Gold Rush from 1897 to 1899, at least 100,000 people stampeded to the gold fields. It's 1903. Delphus may have discussed the news about the settlement of the Alaska boundary dispute. The continent as a whole was still rapidly changing. It's 1917. Delphus's brother, Phileas, dies at age 52. Less than eight months later, Delphus's wife passes away. Pablo was 44. He is 49. According to a 1921 census, Delphus has a single lodger named Irene Joby, age 25 and born in Quebec, living in his residence. She speaks English and is a teacher. Delphus did not speak English and had listed zero months at school compared to his son who had 70. This could make for interesting dynamics in the household where Delphus could continue to learn. Eight years later, in 1929, Delphus Vilmer passes away in Prescott, where he was born at age 61. What I thought how happy I would be If your photograph could talk to me